What is up you guys, it's Emma and I am back with another songwriting tips video for you guys. I took it upon myself to flesh out even more tips, seeing as the last video seemed to really help you guys from looking at the comments. While the following tips are more geared towards the complete beginner, there's no reason why any of these couldn't help the more advanced amongst you. So let's get started. This is 10 more songwriting tips for beginners. Write it from the heart. Not every song is formulated with a specific structure or preconceived idea. A lot of the best songs out there are actually just written in an organic, free-flowing manner. This can be both therapeutic for the writer and a relatable experience for the listener. But how do we effectively do this as writers? How can we put our feelings into words? If you've ever lacked inspiration here and sought advice about this, you've probably been met with responses like, just write from the heart or write the first thing that comes to mind. And that's great and all, but that's very vague advice. How can you truly and practically convey what's coming from your heart and put it into a poetic form that your listeners are gonna enjoy and relate to? First of all, what emotion are you working with? Focus in on that first. If that emotion is coming from a strong personal experience or memory, then dig deep and write down as many different things that you remember from that experience, even if it's just the highlights. Now try and write down in five words or less a subtitle that explains your overall concept of the message you're trying to get across. Why do this? Simply just for focus. If you're struggling to focus and you're swaying from one idea to the next, then referring back to a small subtitle can help you lock yourself back into the frame of mind you wanna be in. Next, try listening to some examples of songs that are based around the same or similar topic that you're writing about too. Study the language that's used, map out the chord progressions, the key, the tempo. At all costs, avoid copying other songs if you wanna be original, but use them to study and analyze. Studying similar songs that are within the realm of what you'd like to do can give you a valuable insight into what already works. Now let's take a look at how you can structure your choruses to effectively get across what you're trying to say in a nutshell. We're gonna use Christina Perry's Jar of Hearts as an example here. We're gonna break this down line by line, so pay attention to the events of what's happening throughout this chorus. In the very first line, we see the singer addressing a question, and this immediately sets this bitter tone of somebody who's been hard done by. The next three lines set out to establish the reason for the initial question, explains the damage that's already been done, and also paints a picture for the audience of two things. Number one, the singer's character who sounds heartbroken, and number two, the character who did the breaking. This of course is just a clever metaphor deliberately planted by the writer to tell us in a more poetic way about this character who is stealing hearts. You're gonna catch a cold from the ice inside your soul. Again, a clever metaphor to establish the character that is at the root of all this grief. This is in an effort to paint a picture of this cold monster in the listeners' heads that they probably can relate to. The singer then comes back with a line that suggests that this character is totally unneeded and unwanted in her life. This can sort of be seen as a resolution to the storyline here. We get this feeling of unforgiveness from the singer. And then it's finished off with a bit of healthy repetition with the initial question being asked again. So in a nutshell, this chorus does the following. Addresses a question, explains the situation and paints the picture of the character using metaphors, hints to a possible resolution, and uses repetition to reiterate a feeling of agitation, all in eight lines. Hopefully this gives you a good example of how feelings or a relatable situation can be conveyed in an effective way in a chorus. If you're not used to writing free flow or you just need a little bit of help getting your words out onto paper, then try something similar to what we've just done today. Try studying a song of your choice and go into some deep analysis to try and better understand how the writer has come to put their feelings into a poetic format. Become a captain of hooks. Your hooks are the catchy melodies, lyrics and phrases scattered throughout your song to shape the structure and most importantly to get your listeners coming back again and again. Let's look at some examples just in case you're unsure. Lady Gaga's tracks are notoriously filled with hook after hook. The initial hook at the very beginning of Bad Romance, 
oh, 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 you know the bit I'm talking about. This brings a sense of immediate familiarity. This same hook is repeated at the end of each chorus in the song, but introduced at the beginning, leaving the listener with a feeling of anticipation. They're left waiting for that same catchy melody to be replayed again. This is more of a structural hook. It helps your mind take a guess at what to expect next. Cue the second and stronger hook that most listeners associate with Bad Romance. Ra 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 ah ah. My Gaga impressions are not so good. <laughs> Again, this is at both the beginning and the end of our chorus. Repetition is ensured here to lodge that sucker deep into your brainal cortex. Is that a thing? So you'll be humming along to Lady Gaga for the rest of your days. I'm fine with that, I love Gaga. <laughs> These are just two examples of hooks in this song. The chorus itself is also classed as a hook. It has a very defined and simple melody that listeners can easily sing along to. A lot of the most successful and catchier hooks out there are actually some of the simplest, some closely resembling nursery rhyme-like melodies. Got Years, Somebody That I Used To Know is a great example of this. If you listen out for the glockenspiel in that song, you you may also hear Bar Bar Black Sheep. So what does it take to write a really tasty earworm that gets your listeners coming back for more? And where do you get started? Well, first of all, understand that your hooks should be easy to sing along to. The aim here is audience participation. The more complex your melody in some cases, the less likely it'll be remembered by the majority. Now, some writers out there might find this a bit frustrating. Surely you wanna fill their ears with all the complex melodies that you're able to play. Right? Well, not always. That simple hook that sounds super boring now will actually probably be the most memorable thing about your song to your audience. Next, you need to think about how you're gonna execute your hooks and there's various ways you can do this. To put this all into practice, start with a basic chord progression of just two chords over four beats. Now improvise some simple melodies using whatever key it is that you're writing in. Experiment with different rhythms here that you think might work. And if you're feeling confident, try laying down some lyrical hooks over what you create too. Never just aim for one hook. Aim instead to cluster them across your song. Again, listen back to some of your favorites and do some analysis. Try identifying some of the hooks in those songs and figure out why and how they've been placed within the song structure and why they work so well. Begin with the title. If you're struggling to get started with a song idea, sometimes the best place to start is simply by the title. Not every song begins with a deep rooted idea and sometimes all it takes is a singular word to get a daisy chain of inspiration going. Brainstorming song titles can help you formulate existing song ideas in your head into cohesive lyrics. Try this next exercise to get you started. Here are a few potential song titles. Pick one of the following words to work with for this exercise. Now take the last letter of the title that you've chosen to create a new title that still relates to your original idea. Once you've done this, keep repeating that process, brainstorming new ideas using the last letter of every word or phrase that you write down. This is a great exercise to try and loosen up your creative mojo and you may even discover new song ideas along the way. When you've done this exercise a few times and you're used to it, then try putting yourself against the clock. That sense of urgency will fling you into creative mode. You could even make notes on how many words you get in a certain amount of time and try and beat that record the next time round. Your creative muse is your Tamagotchi. You gotta keep feeding that sucker, otherwise it's gonna die out. Sometimes inspiration just finds us and strikes when and where it wants to. And in the moment, you can't really explain where it comes from. But some of us don't even experience this sporadic lightning bolt of inspiration. Some of us still feel like we're a little bit left in the dark and a little bit unmotivated. Maybe you're feeling a little bit uninventive, but you're willing to write. So how can you entice inspiration to come to you instead? Well, it's true that we're influenced by the environment around us. What we watch, what we wear, what we read, what we listen to, who we know. And this is where you need to understand that you have complete control over that influence. You can fill your world up with creative activities and creative atmospheres and creative people all in an effort to lure in that inspiration. Don't be afraid to look for inspiration and projects in unusual places too. What you have to understand is that you are in complete control of this influence of inspiration and sitting around waiting for inspiration to strike you might not be the best use of your time. Instead, actively seek it out. You'll probably find that the origins and the meanings of some of your favorite songs come from unusual and unexpected places. For example, Nirvana's Smells Like Team Spirit. 
What do you guys think the song is about? Is it A, Kurt Cobain's teenage years, B, Kurt Cobain smelling like ladies' deodorant, or C, Kurt Cobain's dirty laundry? Drop a comment if you know below and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. Improve your musicianship. A little music theory goes a long, long way and dabbling in a new instrument or two where you can might really expand your horizons when it comes to writing your next song. However, if you've never picked up an instrument before, sometimes this can be really overwhelming and it can be difficult to know where you should begin. So here's what you should do. Start the lessons. There's always the option of teaching yourself online. That's what I did with guitar. But there are some benefits to actually going out and getting yourself a tutor that you can talk to and learn from on a regular basis. Intensive one-on-one -on -one sessions with your tutor, whether it be for piano, vocals, drums, whatever it is, it can really help you improve at a faster pace, faster probably than you teaching yourself at home. It also makes sense to have a tutor for that second opinion so they can honestly tell you whether what you're playing is right or wrong. It can be easy to overlook things when you're teaching yourself perhaps, but ultimately you should learn in a way that's comfortable for you. The point is, start the lessons. If you're still at school, ask if your school provides facilities or whether they provide music tutoring. And if they don't, you can always seek out a tutor outside of school. So what about for those of us who can already play? How can we improve as musicians? What's really gonna make you grow are the challenges that you set for yourself. I find that setting a rehearsal schedule for yourself is a great way to keep your skills on top form. Whether you can dedicate an hour or two after work or school or your entire weekend to the rehearsal room. Just try and make time and rehearse wherever you can. That is one of the keys to consistent improvement. Behind every good musician, there's years of effort and practice. So if you're just starting out don't get disheartened don't rush anything and don't give up just yet it takes time and the more time you put in the more you'll reap the rewards be honest with yourself to ensure that you're making the most of the time that you have, you need to ask yourself where your strengths lie when it comes to songwriting. Are you more of a lyricist or are you better at rhythm guitar or vocals? Maybe your passions lie more in the production realm or maybe you're a better melody writer than anything else. So let's say you've focused in on your strength. What about everything else that your song needs? Now you can stumble your way through and try and cover all bases yourself, but sometimes it's more beneficial to focus in on the areas that you excel at and then enlist other individuals who are stronger in other areas to help with the rest of the song. This isn't to say that you shouldn't try doing everything yourself. In fact, I encourage that you try and dip your toes into as many different skill sets as possible. It will be good for you as a songwriter. But drawing from everybody's strengths will not only just make better use of everybody's time, but will ensure that the end product, the song that you're writing, is the best it can possibly be. Networking comes in handy here if you're not already Already connected to other like-minded musicians and songwriters. There is no reason why you can't work alone, but there's no reason why you should either. If you're willing to be honest with yourself and accept that perhaps another person could do a better job of a certain part of the song you're working on, then seek out an individual who is passionate, able, and willing to take part in your project. It's a great idea to get used to working with others from the get-go if you're not already comfortable with that. And this leads me on to the next tip only work with unicorns. But Emma, unicorns don't exist. Hold up. Let me try and work this into context for you. <laughs> Whenever I work with other people, I sometimes come across these individuals who emit this creative aura, these positive vibes. And whenever you come together to work with these specific types of people, the ideas just don't stop flowing and it is just a joy to work with them. Maybe you know of a band whose lineup has changed that many times that you keep calling the drummer by the wrong name. Or maybe you've been writing with somebody recently who's a complete control freak and is making decisions on everyone's behalf. To work with this mythical theme we've got going for some reason with this tip, we're going to call these people goblins. My point is sometimes there can be creative conflict and maybe this results in band lineups being changed multiple times or projects being halted because nobody came to a resolution. Everybody's left feeling unproductive and at the end of the day no songs are signed off at the end of the session. You don't ever want to find yourself in this pit of constant conflict with no compromise. So what things come into play that make some writers and musicians so incompatible and how can you make sure that you're not one of them? Don't be stubborn. If somebody is offering a second opinion and you don't like it, 
don't shoot them down. Hear them out. Four ears are better than two and perhaps they picked up on something that you didn't. Showing an unwillingness to at least try other people's ideas will only lead to tension building and will make the other person feel really overlooked. Yeah, yeah. Instead, keep your collaborative hat on at all times and harness every idea that's thrown on the table by everyone. Don't take offense. It can sometimes be difficult hearing a conflicting opinion about something that we've created and something that we feel proud of. But the key here is to not take anything too personally and understand how to receive constructive criticism. Understand that most of the time people aren't out to judge your efforts. If they're offering suggestions, they often mean to help you. There is nothing less productive and soul destroying than having to work with people with bad attitudes and others that might not be as passionate about the same stuff that you are. But don't let a difference of opinion opinion stop a project that you've been working on. Instead, be a friendly face, be a good listener, be the kind of person that other people want to work with. Even if you don't enjoy somebody else's idea, there's ways of letting them down gently and finding compromise. Surrounding yourself with the right people and the right unicorns can take some time, but as soon as you've got your team together, there is nothing more empowering. Limit yourself. While songwriting, you can try and limit yourself to actually boost your creativity. Kind of sounds like a contradictory statement, hear me out. Setting yourself some boundaries and timeframes can really bring some focus to your writing process. Setting yourself a goal of finishing a verse, a chorus, or an entire song within a specific timeframe just gives you the drive to get it done. Whether the time frame you set for yourself is an hour, two hours, a day, a weekend, in the back of your mind, you're conscious of these goals, these restrictions, these limits that you're setting for yourself, and it will probably motivate you to kind of get the job done a little quicker. But isn't this rushing it a little bit? Shouldn't we just go at our own pace when it comes to songwriting? Yes and no. Yes, work at your own pace whenever you can. That's your natural flow. And if it's bringing out the best songs in you, then that really can't be faulted. However, stepping outside of your comfort zone and picking up that pace will really make you test yourself against the clock. You'll probably surprise yourself. Here's an example of a time frame that you might want to try for yourself in the future. A while ago, I did a series on YouTube called the 10 Songs Challenge. In this challenge, I wrote, composed, and filmed one song every day for 10 days straight. Every day had its own song theme as a loose guideline to follow. If you're interested in trying this challenge yourself, I've left the link in the description below. And if you want to try following along the same song themes I used, you'll find them in the descriptions of each of the videos. I'll also be doing another 10 songs challenge later on this year, so look out for that. You are an artist. As the artist, your music, your lyrics, you expressing yourself, that is an art form. And your listeners are there to appreciate that art. It deserves to be appreciated. So what makes a good artist and good art? This is subjective, but in my opinion, someone or something that establishes a connection with the audience, provokes an emotional response, someone who studies their craft, expresses their individuality in their work, someone who's a good storyteller, and someone who is completely relentless. This list could go on, but I'd be interested to see what you guys think in the comments below. Whether you're pursuing songwriting as a career or maybe you're more of a hobbyist, understand that what you're creating has immense value, both to yourself and to your listeners. If you are pursuing a career in songwriting, you wanna be persistently practicing your craft at every chance you get. Ask yourself, are you relentlessly writing? Are you collaborating? Are you willing to? Are you studying other artists or is the word songwriter just another word in your Twitter bio? Ask yourself how some of your favorite artists establish that connection with their audience. How do they share their stories? And what made you connect with them in the first place? Why do you love them? Why is that? And finally, exercise your creativity. Put it to the test. There is nothing more productive and helpful than putting yourself to the test. Just as we need to physically exercise, we also need to mentally exercise and get creative too. This can be especially helpful if you're a complete beginner or if you're just struggling to put out any original ideas. So I'd like to point you in the direction of some exercises that might help you out. When it comes to lyrics, I've mapped out some handy exercises and tips in this video. So once you're done here, hop over there for some lyrical help. I've even gone as far as putting together some practical exercises for you guys to follow along with. These are all lyric writing exercises that I encourage that you try every single day to keep your creative muse on its toes. You'll find that the more that you do these exercises, the faster your ideas are gonna spring to mind. Hopefully you guys found these tips super helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. To answer our previous question, which of the following best describes what smells like teen spirit is all about, the answer is, 
Kurt Cobain smelling like ladies deodorant. I would love to see any questions from yourselves in the comments below. And if you guys are interested in checking out my own songwriting, go check out my album Brave, which is available on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, all the usual places. I have a bunch of music videos and lyric videos right here on this channel too. Hit the like button, hit subscribe for some more songwriting content. I'll leave some right here for you. Go and check it out. Go get creative. Enjoy. Go on now. Thanks for watching. Happy writing. And I'll see you guys next time.